Hello, my name is Sharon Dash, and I am from New York City. The name of my book is Our Adventures to the African Burial Ground, a Dominique and Justine's Adventure. The African Burial Ground is about a group of kids that decides to go on a trip. Then the burial ground is a place where slaves were buried. They, um, at this time, during in this period in history, African American slaves were not allowed to be buried with white slaves. So they had a separate burial ground for them. So a separate place for us, like a cemetery. And um, hundreds of years later, it was these um, skeleton remains were discovered. And it was in Manhattan, Lower Manhattan. So they made the place a museum, which is the African burial ground. And you need to come see it because it's part of our history. It took me about six months to write the book because I wanted, um, there's so many things about our history in New York City that um, our children still don't know about. A lot of museums, a lot of landscapes because um, slaves built New York. We built Wall Street. We built a lot of things um, in your community. You'll be surprised. I drew the pictures. Um, yes. Um, I decided to be the illustrator. I'm not um, the best artist, but I thought that it would be cute if I drew my own pictures. Let's read. Our Adventures to the African Burial Ground, Dominique and Justine's Adventure. Now, I dedicated this book to my mother and my father. My father passed away in 2019. My mom passed away um, this year. Um, I'll just read one part of it. My dad had a love of history and he used to take pictures of the family and um, places all over New York City and when we went out. And um, I realized that after my parents passed and after my dad passed, passed away, how priceless these pictures are. Every picture has a moment in time. They're our ancestors now, and they're looking over all of us. Chapter one, it's Saturday morning. Wake up, I said gently shaking my little sister's shoulders. Wake up, Justine. What? Justine muttered peering at me through her sleepy eyes. Look at this beautiful day, I swayed. I opened the curtains and bright sunshine streamed across the room. Justine groaned, rolled over and buried her head in the pillow. I can't believe it's February, I said. It's so warm outside. Well, only need a sweater when we go to the community center this morning. I forgot about that, Justine said, suddenly wide awake. She jumped out of bed and stressed. It's Black History Month, and you know what that means, right? They both cheered. So the picture over here is um, Justine going into um, her sister's room and trying to get her to wake up. Reverend Brown owned the community center in the neighborhood. He liked to plan field trips for the local children, especially during Black History Month. Everyone knew Reverend Brown and how much he loved our community. If you had a problem, just ask Reverend Brown. He was happy to help. He'll grab his briefcase and gather the information necessary to help you solve your problem. All he required was honesty. Dominique, let's go, Justine ordered and ran out of her bedroom. I followed her down the hallway to our parents' bedroom. Mommy, wake up, Justine shouted. 
It's Saturday, and Reverend Brown is taking everyone on a trip to the African Berry Ground in New York City. Remember? I remember Mommy Miles rubbing her eyes. She was tired from working all week. Daddy ignored this and pretended he was still asleep. Justine grasped one of Mommy's arms while I took the other one. Together, we pulled Mommy up. There's a picture of um, Mommy and Daddy, and the girls are going to try to wake her, wake um, both of them up. And they're laughing in their beautiful room with the sun shining. So um, next page. Thanks, girls, Mommy said, slowly standing up. Don't forget, you have ballet class first. Then everyone is leaving on the bus for the burial ground. We always look forward to our weekly ballet class at the community center. It was a chance to see not only our friends from school, but also our friends from the neighborhood. I love ballet, Justin commented. Me too, I replied. The community center is such a fun place. Yes, it is, Justine winked at me, green mischievously. Race, you to the room. That's all I need to hear. You're on. I shouted and dashed out the door ahead of her. We raced back to our bedrooms to pack our ballet clothes while mommy and daddy made breakfast for us. Chapter two, the community center. Good morning, Reverend Brown, I said politely. When we walked through the front door of the community center, hi, history band, Justin shouted behind me. Reverend Brown chuckled. <laughs> Good morning, girls. I used to wonder why everyone called Reverend Brown the history man. Later I learned it was because he loved history. Now I knew why I was surrounded by history every time. I walked through the door of the community center. Photographs of local children covered the walls, as well as photographs of influential politicians and community leaders. For example, Reverend Brown had met many important people during his life, like Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, and Mega Evans. Thanks, girls. Mommy's. On the way to my ballet class, I stopped to watch Reverend Brown hang a new photograph in the hallway. Walking through this building always feels like a history lesson. I commented. Reverend Brown smiled proudly. Of course, Dominique, he replied. I planned it that way. So there's Dominique and Justine with the pictures on the wall and the pictures of Dr. King and Malcolm X. Chapter three, the ballet class. After hanging into, after changing into my leotard and ballet slippers, I sat on the floor to do warm up with a series of stretches. When I finished, I stood up and walked over to the bar. The bar is my favorite. I've never liked the floor stretches, although my ballet teacher says they're necessary for a complete warm up. But I think bar stretches are more fun. I love the way ballet challenges me. It requires lots of concentration and discipline. Not everyone likes that, but I do. There's um, Justine and um, Dominique doing their ballet routines. One's at the bar, one's doing um, a leg, trying to leg lift and twirl. Ballet classes were fun. At the community center, several ballet classes offered one for each age group. Because I'm older than Justine, we aren't in the same class. However, towards the end of every ballet class, all the classes are combined, which allows the older students to help the younger ones. Until then, we try to keep an eye on each other. Sometimes I see mommy and daddy or one of the parents watching us from the hallway. 
Justin and I do the same thing, peeking at each other through the door that joins our classrooms. After ballet, we ran back to the dressing room to change out of our dance clothes and into our street clothes for the trip. I'll take those, mommy said, when we finished dressing. We gladly gave her our ballet bags so we won't have to carry them on the bus. A line was already forming to, the, to board the bus by the time we arrived. When we were seated, Mrs. Jackson gave everyone their name tag. Be quiet, children, Mrs. Tubb instructed, and listen carefully. This is how we expect you to behave. I wonder what Deborah and Diane are going to do this time, Justine whispered to me. Deborah and Diane were twins. They were always doing something to get everyone in trouble. But you, everyone has friends like that. What about Tyrone, I asked. He'll say something silly, Justine replied, rolling her eyes. He always does. Then Reverend Brown will give him that look and he'll stop. I laughed, it was true. Tyrone liked to start trouble, but even he knew it wasn't wise to disobey Reverend Brown. Chapter four, the African burial ground. After Mrs. Tubb announced the rules to follow for the trip, everyone started talking at once. It was really loud. Quiet, Miss Jackson shouted. Put your name tags on and fasten your seat belts. A few minutes later, Reverend Brown stepped into the bus. Immediately, everyone stopped talking. It was so quiet, you could hear the birds chirping in the trees along the streets. Reverend Brown nodded his head in approval. Children, he said, I want you to enjoy yourselves on this trip. You can talk to each other and have fun. Just keep the noise down, noise level down to a low roar, okay? Then he laughed. Reverend Brown didn't laugh often, but when he did, it was usually with the community center children or his wife and family. His laugh was so joyous, everyone instantly relaxed. He loved children. Reverend Brown sat down in the driver's seat of the bus. His wife settled in the seat directly behind him. He turned the key to start the engine and we were on our way to Manhattan. The African Burial Ground National Monument located on Broadway in New York City. It's the oldest and largest burial site of African slaves in North America. One of the main purposes of the monument is to document the role slavery played in the building of Manhattan. When we arrived, Mrs. Tubb and Ms. Jackson directed us off the bus into the museum. I'll bet this place is full of ghosts, Tyrone said to everyone. Let me know if a ghost jumps at you in a dark corner and grabs you. A few of the younger children believed him and their eyes widened with fear. Relax, children, Reverend Brown said. Tyrone is just teasing. There are no ghosts here and there's nothing to fear. You're perfectly safe. He gave Tyrone a warning look and walked out, allowing Ms. Tubb Ms. Jackson to show us around. This is where we're gonna stop. And I wanna see what what happened next? So you could buy the book and you will find out what will happen on their trip to the burial ground. What will the children see? Are they going to be ghosts? Are they going to see their ancestors? How is Reverend Brown going to explain everything to the kids? Um, the two teachers pay attention to their names. Mrs. Tubbs and Mrs. Jackson. And.